Hello everyone and welcome to Channel 18 TV News. I'm Don Julian. In the news, a faulty license plate light led to a traffic stop at Bellevue and Locust Streets and eventually to the arrest of a 41-year-old Sulphur Springs man early Sunday morning for a fourth driving while intoxicated charge. Hopkins County Sheriff's Deputy Lance Burdick said that he could smell alcohol on the man as he spoke to him about that license plate light. Deputy reported seeing a 30-pack of beer in the back seat of the man's car, and the man admitted to having eight beers. A uh, records check showed the man to have three prior DWI arrests. Timmy Lynn Clark was charged with felony DWI, and Clark was released on $15,000 bond later on Sunday. A 23-year-old Arkadelphia, Arkansas man led Hopkins County deputies on a high-speed chase off of State Highway 154, make, uh, 154 South onto county roads with an infant and a small child in his car just before 8 p.m. on Saturday. A deputy had wanted to stop the man's vehicle after noticing that the vehicle did not have a front license plate. Man's uh, car fled police at speeds exceeding 100 miles per hour. The pursuit went into Wood County, uh, where the uh, man abruptly stopped at a residence. Man then jumped out of the car, jumped a barbed wire fence, and ran through a Yantis pasture. Deputies eventually caught up to the man. The Arkansas man told deputies that he fled because he was wanted in Arkansas on felony charges. Dylan Curtis Derry was jailed on two counts of child endangerment and one charge of evading arrest. Man remains uh, jailed at last report on bonds totaling $20,000. In sports, after a big Saturday and Sunday in the Dixie World Series at Coleman Park in Sulphur Springs, five Debs teams, six Ponytails, and six Angels teams are still in contention for championships. A dozen teams have already been eliminated in the double elimination tournament. All three Hopkins County host teams are still in the hunt. The Hopkins County Debs won their two weekend games, defeating Cold Spring, Texas, Saturday morning and Tennessee, Sunday night. The uh, Hopkins County Ponytails won Saturday evening over Louisiana, but then lost to Alabama Sunday night. Hopkins County Angels won games Saturday and Sunday, topping North Carolina Saturday afternoon and Florida Sunday morning. Monday night, the Hopkins County Ponytails will be playing in an elimination game against Virginia. That game started at 6 p.m. on field number two. Hopkins County Debs will play South Carolina Monday at 8 p.m. on field five. And the Hopkins County Angels will play the winner of an Alabama and Virginia game that was played late uh, Sunday night. And that uh, game will be on Monday night at 8 p.m on field number three. The other three uh, Texas teams in the uh, Dixie World Series were all eliminated on Sunday morning. The Texas Debs team was come from Cold Spring and the uh, Texas Ponytails and Texas Angels were both from Franklin County. T uh, play will wrap up in that uh, Dixie World Series on Wednesday night. First athletic competition for this school year uh, got underway Monday morning at the Wildcat Tennis Center. Wildcats Team Tennis hosted Always Tough Sherman in matches that got underway at around 9 a.m. on Monday. For the second year in a row, Sherman eked by the Wildcats 10 to 9. Wildcats trail 5 to 2 after the doubles matches. Wildcats uh, mixed doubles team of Jolie Cantu and Jonah Kirkpatrick won over Sherman 8 to nothing. The girls doubles team of Paige Meesey and Trinity Luckett won 8 to 7 in a tiebreaker. In a highly competitive number one boys doubles match, the Wildcats team of Aaron Lucas and Logan Schumacher lost to a talented Sherman pair 8 to 7 in a tiebreaker. Girls doubles team of Katie Beth Hurd and Savannah Lilly lost 8-4. Girls doubles team of Ella Ray and uh, Makaili Metter lost 8-1. to 
Boys doubles team of Jordan Gonzalez and Waylon Matlock lost 8-3. Boys doubles team of Brandon Dietrich and Alex Romero lost 8-5. The Wildcats did very well in boys and uh, girls singles uh, matches, winning 7 and losing 5. Wildcats also played Denison at the Wildcat Tennis Center Monday afternoon, and the Wildcats will be playing at McKinney Boyd Tuesday morning, beginning at 9 a.m. With the Wildcats football JV and varsity teams having to wait uh, till next Monday for to begin practice, the Wildcats freshman team has center stage all to themselves this week. Last year, the UIL said that freshmen could report on the regular starting day for football, uh, which is uh, August 5th this year, since the freshmen did not participate in spring football uh, this past spring. Since the Wildcats JV and varsity did have spring football, they lose a week of practice and one scrimmage in the fall. Wildcats football coach Greg Owens said the freshman uh, practice this week is very beneficial for not only the players but the coaches alike. Uh, among the coaches working with the freshmen this week will be the varsity coaching staff. Uh, players will get to meet that varsity staff and the varsity coaches have the opportunity to find out all about these uh, freshman football players. Practice is expected to get underway each day for the freshman team uh, at around 4.30 p.m. That's Channel 18 TV News. I'm Don Julian. Thank you for joining me and so long everybody.